In this video, we are going to be taking you for a float in a popular day spot called Los Rapidos with a quick comparison to a place called Saca. In order to get to these locations though, we needed to rent transportation and what better way to see Bacalar than on a scooter. But it proved a little bit more difficult than we thought. So grab your floaty vest and a drink and get ready to float. On the first day we arrived into Bacalar, we scoped out the area for scooter rentals and when we went back to rent the scooter, it was unfortunately closed. But not to worry, there's more than just one rental scooter shop in Bacalar. So we headed on to the next. If I could offer any advice on renting a scooter in Bacalar, it would be to bring your passport. Passport, I can show it to you. I have a picture of it. Or I can give you my driver's license. Yeah, no, for no, no, that license is for you, but for um, rented the scooter in Bacalar is necessary one passport. Okay. They will not rent you a scooter without one. We learned that the hard way and had to walk all the way back to our Airbnb in the blazing sun. Now, with passport in hand, we were ready to venture out on the scooter. Finally! It was so nice to feel the breeze. Los Rapidos isn't far from the town of Bacalar, and it's really easy to find the road that leads you to the entrance, but it's in very poor condition. It's hard to tell from this video, but get ready to hold on. Hola. You park anywhere? We got to Los Rapidos later than expected due to the extra passport run we had to make, but there are still plenty of good seats by the water. First things first, picking out a floaty vest. After we scoured the racks for a floaty vest in my size, there weren't any. They're all extra large. We just picked two off the rack and found out later that this would be a blessing in disguise. We thought this would be a great spot, so we set up shop for a few hours. Los Rapidos has a decent sized menu with lots of seafood dishes to try. We weren't up to trying seafood, so we ordered a pizza and some drinks. As we filled our bellies, we watched people float by while others attempted to kayak. <laughs> then we finally decided it was our turn to take the plunge. They built this boardwalk over top of the stromatolites to help people avoid touching them since they are the oldest living fossil in the world. The water looked very inviting and Jay was liking his new attire for the swim. There was no wasting any time. We jumped in to let the floating begin. This was the blessing in disguise. I used my floaty vest as a floaty chair instead. Now we're talking. Oh, this is fun. <laughs> I'm like moving. I like it. This is actually fun. That's pretty good. Yeah. Let's see how fast we're going. Not bad. Oh, I think we need to go in the middle of this way a little. <laughs> this is actually way more fun than I thought it was going to be. You can just sit and relax in my little, my little floaty chair and float down. The water is absolutely perfect temperature and it's clear. So cool. I don't know where Jay is. I lost Jay. Oh. Hey. <laughs> this is kind of fun. We're moving faster than I thought we we would move. They didn't have life jackets that fit me. So this was my this is my next go-to. I think it works. It's a float chair now. I like it. Floaty chair. <laughs> Welcome to retired life. Ah. It's definitely gotten busier since we got here as well. It's about 10 after 12. And I think we probably got here about an hour ago. And we got good seats right by the water. There goes the kayaker. But the scooter rental. I uh, can't remember the name of the place. Atelier Pro Cycle, I think yeah. it was nice. called. I mean, full-time bike shop, scooter rental. That's all they do. Yep. It was okay. They only had three scooters left. Uh, I think pricing is pretty standard. It was about five to six feet we paid for the day, seven hundred if we wanted it for twenty four hours. Yeah, I still can't. I still can't get over the prices here. It was but. A, the larger, <laughs> it was a larger model, uh, one hundred and fifty cc. But they're uh, they're like Italica brand scooters. They're not like you're not near as good a quality as like your no. Honda scooters and all that kind of stuff that we've rented uh, in other countries. Yeah. So 
I mean, it's kind of small for the two of us, like lengthwise. It's not a very big scooter, but got us no. here. And there's no foot pegs on the back. They just have like a platform where you're supposed to put your feet. It's not really and it's not located. not very nicely located, and it kind of like hurts my legs when I'm sitting on the bike. But yeah. Anyways, we're not. We only rented it for half a day, so yeah, it has to be no. back by seven tonight. But yeah. This, what, what was funny is that I mean, they, you pay for the scooter and they take your uh, passport. You have to have your passport. Yes. In Bacalar, you have, have to have to your have passport. It. They take it and hold it as collateral. Yes. Um, Plato Carmen and all that. We never had any problem. Even renting a car, we never needed a passport. But Bacalar, everywhere we went, you have to have your passport, which isn't a problem. We gave it to them. We'll get it back and we take the scooter back. But it's funny how uh, I think it's uh, a little bit something lost in translation when we were talking to the girl. She basically says, uh, like, I know in Plato Carmen, we went to ride a scooter, had insurance included and things like that. Bacalar, there's no insurance. She's basically said, you know, everything that happens with the scooter is on you now. Um, and basically, we don't have our truck anymore to come and get you if something happens. So if you get a flat tire or anything happens, you're on your own. Yeah. I'm you're like, really? <laughs> I'm like, really? That's like, who do we call if we have a problem? She's like, I don't know. Uh, maybe the uh, call the police <laughs> and they can send somebody maybe. But I'm like, so if our scooter breaks down, we don't call you. She's like, nope. I'm like, huh. I don't get that. Okay. Thank you. Yeah. <laughs> here's here's the keys. Have a nice day. <laughs> I think it was yeah. more of a, a language barrier thing. She, she, she couldn't explain it well. So it was basically like... Here's the keys. There's the door. Thanks. Yeah. <laughs> Give me your money. Get out. Get out! <laughs> See, you're not slow. You're still waiting in line. <laughs> This current is crazy. Jay's like booking it. I'm like, wait for me! Wait for me! <laughs> crazy. I don't know. Can you guys see how clear the water is? That's unbelievable. Here we go. Great. This is our second float. This is fun. Like, this is definitely you could come for the day and just like hang out and have fun with your family and kids will love it oh my gosh yeah and the water temperature is perfect so if you watched our last video if you haven't watched our last video of boating in Bacalar we lost our drone in Cenote Esmeralda I'm gonna put that link above in the screen here so you go ahead and watch that one after you watch this one screw you Esmeralda <laughs> But it would have been nice to have the drone here to kind of get an idea of the lagoon. But you guys are just going to have to take our word for it. How cool it is. It's beautiful. Yeah. It's, cool. it's really nice. Yeah. It's very nice. Quite a few people. It's definitely getting busier. We yes. got here about 11 o'clock. Yeah. About 11 o'clock, yeah. And it was just picking up and we got a table and all that. But since then, it's been just people coming in pretty much nonstop. Yep. But. So while we have time on the second float because we went up a little bit further we want to tell you guys where we are going next and the plan was wow what where are we going next <laughs> i will tell you in a minute the plan was to stay in mexico until july until we have to go back home for canadian summer so oh i'm getting out of the path here <laughs> so Instead of touring around Mexico, we actually booked flights. We are going to, drum roll, Peru. <laughs> I am so excited. Machu Picchu has been on our bucket list for a long time and I can't wait to go and hike. We are gonna hike the Salcante Trail. We're gonna do it independently. We have pretty much everything booked so far. We are leaving Thursday. As you guys watch this, we will already be in Peru. I've, I'm losing Jay to the current. <laughs> come back. Jack, come back. I'm swimming. I'm swimming. I'm swimming. <laughs> so as you guys watch this, we will have already been in Peru for about a week. So we are flying into Lima, staying in Lima for one night, and then we're heading to Cusco. So when we get to Cusco, because the elevation is so high, we have to acclimate to the, to the higher altitude. 
So we're just gonna be hanging out, chilling. Oh, there's some people pumping, pumping the jams. Right. <laughs> That's okay. okay. <laughs> I apologize. No, not at all. <laughs> You're allowed to have too much fun. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> so yes, when we get to Cusco, we have to acclimate to the altitude because it is 11,000 feet? Uh, I don't know. I think it's around 11,000 feet. We'll double check. I think. I could be wrong. No, I don't, I think, I don't think it's that high. We're going to take it easy for the first little bit and just kind of get used to the altitude. So we're going to do some city site tours and then we are going to climb. We're going to do a few climbs. That's the plan. And then we only really have the month of May kind of figured out. And then we're kind of, kind of going to go from there. But I am so excited. Are you excited? I'm pretty excited. Yeah, yeah. we're, we're yeah. pretty excited to, to uh, do a trek. We've never trekked before. And so this is going to be something new. Um, so yeah, if you guys want to continue following us, subscribe, hit the thumbs up if you like this video and yeah, subscribe so you don't miss out on our Peru excursions. I can't wait. I cannot wait. So yeah, there's lots of kayakers up and down, lots of kids. It's been like super hot here in Bacalar. I didn't realize how much hotter it would be than Playa del Carmen. But this sun is intense here. Like it's been yeah. like 33, 34 days. It's like it's hot. It's obviously it's moving closer to summer and that. But yeah, yeah we're just moving, just coming down from Plato Carmen, it went from 30, 31 to 33, 34, and it's pretty noticeable. Yeah, uh, it's from, like you're sweating a, all the time. On a clear day <laughs> when that sun hits you, you can just feel the, the, the heat searing on you. It's like wow. Yeah, definitely time, get a <laughs> time to move on. Yeah. let's go to. Uh, we're definitely going to get a change cooler. of pace in uh, Peru. The temperatures in Lima right now are like 75 to like 85. And then when we go to Cusco, because it is a higher elevation, it is going to be cooler, probably like high 60s. Right. So we've, 40s, uh, yeah. 40s at night. There's a, probably May, anyway. a, a few pieces of clothing that we're going to have to purchase. Jay still doesn't have hiking boots. So, yeah. Not a lot of stuff. Just nope. some hiking boots. Oh, and wait. Layer. And a drone. <laughs> I forgot about that. <laughs> uh, number one purchase when we get to Lima will be finding a DJI store and purchasing a new drone. So that's going to be exciting. Now we're not moving our feet at all and it's like, Wee! Wee! <laughs> We have the bike till 7 p.m. tonight. So we're not sure how long we're going to stay here. We might just kind of like toot around and see a little bit more Bacalar. Head over to Sacha. Yeah, there's um, it's kind of like a public. <laughs> Make sure <laughs> Look these, at these guys kayakers. know. What to... We're gonna need some. Uh, uh oh, we might have to get out of their way. Evasive maneuvers here, I think. <laughs> We're gonna go right down the middle. Yeah. Um, whoa, whoa, oh, oh, whoa, oh, whoa, oh, oh. And they're going right by. All right. Good job. Good job. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Until they crash. <laughs> Put on the brakes. Hang left. We'll go. Oh, we'll go right by the. Uh, the wall again and come yeah. around it like we talked about yeah okay you're on your own i'm on my own oh no <laughs> after we were done floating at las rapidos it was time to get back on the scooter and find our next stop saka Turns out that Saka isn't far from Los Rapidos, and the road to get there is in the same condition. So, hang on! Finally, the bumpy road came to an end. We paid a small entrance fee, found a place to park, and just kind of walked around the area just to get a feel of the place. There are lots of palapas to rent at Saka, but we just set up under a shade tree and jumped into the water. This would be great to like, bring your lawn chair out here and just sit in the water. It's so shallow. <laughs> So this is Saka. I think that I think I'm pronouncing it right. It's very 
has a very local feeling to it. It cost 50 pesos per person and they have palapas for rent for 100 pesos. You can rent a kayak, I think, for another 100 pesos. And yeah, you can just come and hang out under the palapas with your family. You can't have any like uh, grills or anything. But they do have stores. You can buy like nachos and cheese here. You can buy drinks. It's very relaxing. And the water is perfect. They did have areas roped off for the stromatolites with signs letting you know that they were there. It was nice to see so many people out with their families just enjoying the water. We had a little siesta under the shade tree. Then it was time to hit the road and search for some good eats. But first, we had to tackle this bumpy road. kind of like beach clubs you, you yeah. pay for an entrance and then you can buy food and drinks there and that but you have a place to sit in the shade uh, Los Rapidos seems to me it's a bit nicer place you do have the uh, life jackets and you can float down the river and stuff like that yep. if you go to Saka uh, it's, it's poor definitely family, family oriented, family oriented. Yeah. there's lots of blob that you can yes. rent and stuff like that and set up for the day but yep. like you don't really, you wouldn't need to do but we did both of them in one day you wouldn't need to do no. both the same day it's kind of like pick one pay to go there and hang out for the afternoon yeah. or whatever and yeah. then another day maybe go to the other one and see what you think but it's definitely a lot more expensive going to Las Rapidos, Las Rapidos. Yeah. it was 200 pesos per person to get in yes and then the menu was fairly pricey like a pizza was like 260 pesos yeah and they're not they're not big pizzas no, they're, they're, they're tiny. You know, kind of a smaller size and that kind of thing and like you have to pay for wi-fi pay for a locker you wanted to do um kayaking you pay for your kayak single or double so once you get in there there are other costs if you wanted to do those things right. i feel like um Saka is a lot less touristy it's very family oriented a lot, a lot of locals were there and it's all like shallow water so great for kids to just kind of play around um yeah but we had fun at Los Rapidos I like doing the rapids I thought it was I, it, it was, was way more fun than was, I thought it was gonna be it was a be. fun experience yeah it's yes. nice the water's nice yes. and clear it's, it's moving beautiful. nicely it is it is a cool spot to check out yeah you know Saka if you go there it was 50 to, uh, 50 pesos per person to get in for adults yeah. Yeah, and then person. if you wanted to rent a palapa, it was 100 pesos. And if you wanted to rent a kayak, it was 100 pesos. So, I mean, yeah. we could have went to Sakha for what we spent at, at Los Rapidos. We could have went to Sakha, got uh, our entrance, a kayak, and a yeah. palapa, and still spent less yeah. than we did going just going yeah. into Los Rapidos. So, okay. that's something to consider. And it seemed like at, uh, at Sakha, families were bringing in like their... Coolers, cooler and, stuff and that. Yeah, so really like they were just running the place of, yeah. and setting up for picnics yeah. and stuff like that. You can't have any grills there. Or pets. Or pets, yeah, which I thought was interesting. Yeah. yeah. And I didn't see like a big restaurant, like they have like a little variety store and they do sell like nachos and cheese, that kind of thing, but not like a full blown restaurant yeah, like Los Rapidos. We didn't see a full no. big restaurant of any type, really. No. But both good. Both great places for family. You can spend the whole day there and just chill, relax. Both great atmospheres. Yeah, both give you nice access yeah, to the water. for sure. That's all we got. Where's the food? Yeah. <laughs> there. That's it. Oh, yummy. The food's here. Okay, we gotta go. Cheers. Well, it's fitting. We're ending this video where it all started in Bacalar when we got off the ADO bus. Because <laughs> we couldn't resist the tacos and the guacamole one more time before we left. So we're gonna wrap up the video for today. Don't forget, we will have already been in Peru for probably, what, four or five days by the time you guys watch this. So if you want to watch our Peru series, don't forget to subscribe, hit the notification bell, Give us a big thumbs up if you like this video and we'll see you in Peru. Bye guys. Big fat.
zero at the bank. Seriously, what is with us? We almost missed our bus. It felt like we were negotiating for a house. 